The global race for space is heating up. The countdown for India's Chandrayaan-3 to land on the moon has begun. It has left the Earth's orbit and its next stop is the moon. It's another big win. ISRO launched seven satellites from Sriharikota in Andhra Pradesh. And in the US, a mission by NASA has blasted off into space. While we often watch what's happening on Earth, here's a look at what's happening beyond. In July, India's mission to the moon grabbed the world's attention. Chandrayaan-3 successfully lifted off from Andhra Pradesh and thousands gathered to witness its historic launch. The mission is now inching closer towards the moon. It has successfully completed orbiting the Earth and it's just hours away from entering the moon's orbit. ISRO hopes to land the mission on the moon as early as 23rd August. And if all goes well, India will become the fourth country in the world to achieve a soft landing on the moon. Only three countries have managed to do so. Chandrayaan-3 will then explore the moon's south pole, making India the first country in history to reach there. The mission's success will mark a huge milestone for India. Days after Chandrayaan-3 was launched, ISRO added another feather to its cap. Its PSLV C-56 rocket blasted off into space from the Satish Dhawan Space Centre. It was carrying seven Singaporean satellites and within just half an hour they were perfectly placed into orbit. One of the most important satellites on board the rocket was the DSSAR. Here's a look at the satellites launched. This launch has boosted India and Singapore's space partnership. Singapore, though, is not the only country that India has launched satellites for. ISRO has launched a whopping 431 foreign satellites for over 30 countries. India's $8 billion space economy is clearly booming. And with four more missions lined up for this year, India is on track to become a space superpower. Coming to the final big development, NASA's latest mission lit up the night sky as it lifted off from Virginia. It's set to deliver science, snacks and supplies to the International Space Station. This mission was carried out for NASA by the leading defense company Northrop Grumman. Its Antares rocket launched into space with a spacecraft called Cygnus. It's carrying over 3,700 kgs of supplies from medical studies to a new water dispenser to artwork by students. Here's a look at its contents. This is the company's 19th cargo mission to the ISS. Now, what is the International Space Station? Home to astronauts and cosmonauts for over two decades. The ISS is a massive spacecraft orbiting the Earth. It's as big as two Boeing 747s and weighs over 400,000 kilograms. In this space laboratory, astronauts conduct scientific experiments and make groundbreaking contributions to tech and medicine. It also has a gym where astronauts work out for at least two hours a day. That's all for the news from out there. But India's eyes will be glued to the stars this weekend as ISRO looks to complete its moon mission. I think we can all agree that freedom of expression is not limitless. Your words have consequences, your actions have fallouts. So the line must be drawn somewhere. The only question is where. So there are upgrades across the board. All three defense services are getting bigger and more lethal weapons. And this is the need of the hour. China's buildup on the border remains a concern, 38 months and counting. India needs better weapons to secure its front lines. So arms trade is just another source of income for them. And this is a serious setback in the fight against terrorism. All because of American callousness. So 
the stock rally is like a vote of confidence from investors. They are betting on India. They're positive about the India story. It's the government's job now to repay that faith. This incident once again highlights the role of social media and the internet. It's a double-edged sword, really. So tough times for the world. There is inflation, layoffs and pay cuts. But not for King Charles of Britain. Forget pay cuts. He's all set to receive a massive pay hike. What is offensive to one religion could be sacred to another. Europe must realize this. They keep lecturing the world about minorities, how they should be protected, how their rights and culture must be promoted. But at home, it's the exact opposite. People are burning the holy book of your minority group. And what is your response? You say it's freedom of expression. 